You got a summer sheet. First one is softly and tender. And uh, the second one is open the eyes of my heart. So here we go.
say good morning to you this day. I have a question for you though. I want to know what do a snail, a turtle, and a crab have in common? Yes, Greg. They all carry their home on their back. They all carry their home on their back. That's true. I knew there would be one child in here who would get it. Yes, they all carry their home on their back, and that's important. How many of you ever remember your first time going to summer camp? All right. I remember my first time in very vividly. It was a Boy Scout camp, Camp Saulmeyer, close to Fort McKenna, Texas, south of Brady, between Brady and Menard. And so that's where I went first time, summer camp. And everything was really good on Sunday. We left at 4 o'clock. It was good on Sunday until about 4.15. And I wanted to go home. Do you remember that? Do you remember that first time being, you know, I remember that first time being separated from home and going, oh my gosh, I need to go home. That's kind of our theme for today, is home. And turtles, and snails and crabs, they all carry their home on their back, right? But it wasn't the physical place that I missed. It was the people, and my mom, my dad, the things that were very, very important to me. And I really want us to realize that home, today, especially with the theme that we have, home, not the theme, home, is more than just a place to stay. It's a special place for us within which we find out who we are. It's a place where we feel safe, a place where we feel surrounded by love. Home is extremely important. In a very real sense, it's where our hearts are. We welcome him to welcome Jesus into our hearts. He will always be at home with us. So let's pray. Thank you, most loving God, for the whole idea of home, for we find out who we are and where we are always surrounded. Thank you, most gracious God, and let Jesus be at home in our hearts. For we offer our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point in time, we will be taking up the, the, the food. Our children will be going out to the congregation doing that, gathering the food, bringing back their offerings for the Bethany Food Pantry. We have received a lot of offerings during the week. Uh, for the Bethany Food Pantry. There were two big sacks full of cans. And I know several people have brought their gifts in as they entered into the, to the sanctuary here in the gathering place. So please remember, remember the, the Bethany Food Pantry, either with gifts of food that you can leave on our front porch or a check that you can make. Uh, we'll make sure that they get that money. Thanks be to God for the Lord's help. Uh, it's now time also for prayer. And uh, I, I want Greg to come because I think he has some, some prayer needs to, to share with you. Is that right? Sure, yeah, I can start. Yeah, come on. Yeah, and thank you, Jim. Actually, I just wanted to, he and I always talked before, and I have some things that weren't written down that I just want to share. So I want to start with thanking Natalie Dax for the beautiful flowers. And I know y'all can see these in person, and I hope that the camera can see them. I think some of these flowers are, not all of them, came from your own yard. 
far. So that means Al probably grew those flowers. But uh, seriously, man, they're beautiful. Thanks, Al. Man. The, uh... <laughs> so I'm also, uh, Jeff will share birthdays, but I'm thinking specifically about May 19th. Uh, yeah, of course, that's coming up. Uh, May 19th is, means a lot to me in many ways, but it's, it's the birthday of Ben Miller. If you, if you choose to reach out to Jerry and Sharon, um, it's also the birthday of a real close friend of mine, a family friend named Jimmy. I call him Jimmy, but I'm sure as a grown man, he calls himself Jim now. But we met in the third grade, so I still call him Jimmy Stoltz. And it's his birthday on May 19th, and on May 22nd, uh, that's on Saturday of this coming week, uh, Jimmy and his extended family will be uh, celebrating the life of his mother, Joe Stoltz, who passed away. Uh, I spent many hours in, in the home of Joe Stoltz when I was a little boy. And I'm just, Jimmy, I just want you to know that we're thinking about you if you're listening right now. I want any other friends that grew up with you to be aware of that service. And I have one other announcement. Um, she looks really calm and rested over there, my wife Dawn, but um, she made a whirlwind trip to Nashville, Tennessee recently. Uh, she got home yesterday. And our daughter, Sarah, is, has moved to Nashville and has taken a nursing position at Vanderbilt Hospital. And um, we're actually very excited for her. We're going to miss her, but we're excited for her. Um, I'm looking at Al and Natalie. They have a son in Nashville. Um, I'm, I'm excited to visit okay. Nashville. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, we're, we're keeping our daughter, Sarah, in our prayers. And uh, she starts work tomorrow. This happened very quickly, and we can tell you the, the story later. But we just want to lift that up and ask for your prayers. And thank you. We do have birthdays to celebrate. On the okay, now I'm. We've done this so weird for so long. What day is today? What is the date? May sixteenth. Thank you. Today, the sixteenth of May. Kim Anawati shares a birthday with Bob Coleman. Uh, Sharon X. Erickson will have her birthday tomorrow on the 17th. And then Joyce Coleman and Joan Winnick. Winnick, that Winnick. Uh, on the 19th of May, Rose Ireland and Ian Starock share their birthday on the 20th. Rose is here with us today. Uh, let me see who else is here. Is anybody else here? Okay, Laura Hensley and Thomas Nash. They share their birthday on the 27th. And then Hudson Borders, somebody I know, and Zachary Carroll, also somebody I know. 524 is their birthday, May the 24th. Happy birthday to all of you, Rose. Shall we? Shall we? Yes. <laughs> Gracious and loving God, thank you for the home that you have created within each one of us, where your spirit lives, where your strength strengthens us, and where your love reminds us who we are, for we are you. We thank you for that, most gracious God, and ask your blessings to be upon us and upon our families, wherever they may be. Watch over us, watch over them, watch over those who are close to us, and keep us all strong. Keep us, keep us all comforted, and make us patient. Thank you for all you do for us, Father. 
thank you for this day. Thank you for all the, those days yet to be. And thank you for the time that we've been allowed to spend together. Hear our prayers, for we offer them in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. And the one who taught us also to pray these, these words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and our power, and the glory forever. Today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. May God bless this reading of his word. Thank you, Tricia. 
Now, I used to joke and say choir, you know, they're, still, they're basically our choir today, but I say thank you singers, each individually and collectively, that was just beautiful. So I closed last week's sermon with a love story, and I want to open this week's sermon with a love story. This true story begins with a real live prince, a real life prince. I'm going to completely mispronounce his name. Sao, S-A-O, Sao, Kaya, Sang, Sao Kaya Sang was from a collection of states in northeastern Burma, that would be Myanmar now, Southeast Asia. And Sang, Sang came, we're going to call him Sang from now on, that's easier for me to pronounce, and that's his, his last name. Sang came to Denver in the 1950s to study agriculture. And he wanted to experience what it was like to be a typical student in the uh, U.S., so he kept his identity as a prince secret. One of his fellow students was Inga Sargent, Inga. Inga was from Austria, and since both of them were exchange students, they found that they had a lot in common. And as they spent more and more time together, their friendship turned into love. And now here's where the story begins to sound more like a fairy tale, but it isn't. The prince decided not to tell Inga who he really was, even though their relationship had gotten serious. And he wanted her to love him for who he truly was as a person and not because of his title and his wealth. On their wedding day in the U.S., he didn't reveal his true identity. But on their honeymoon, they took a ship to Burma to see his family. And as their ship docked, hundreds of people were waiting at the harbor. Many were holding up welcome signs. A band was playing. People were tossing flowers. Inga asked who these people were celebrating. And then the prince turned to his bride and said, Inga, these people are celebrating our arrival. You are their princess. In this moment, Inga saw her husband in a new way for who he really was and had been. This is Ascension Sunday, a, a little, it used to be uh, observed in a bigger, bolder way, but now it's, it's kind of a, considered more of a minor uh, Christ, a Christian day or a day of observance, but it's the day we, that we celebrate and honor when Jesus literally ascended to be in heaven. And there was the crucifixion, there was the resurrection, we talk about that over and over, and we don't stop often enough and, and acknowledge that there was also an ascension. On the day Jesus ascended to heaven, his disciples were finally able to see him for who he really was and had been all along as he made his way back to heaven, back to his true and ultimate home. I called this sermon Homeward Bound. From the Simon and Garfunkel song. If you know the song, you already hear it in the chorus, right? Homeward bound, homeward bound, I wish I were homeward bound. If you don't know that song, I encourage you to find it. Uh, it, may, it may seem like an old song, but I know you're going to like it if you've never heard it before. We're all trying to find our way to our true and ultimate home. Jesus' disciples had seen him do miraculous things at during the whole time they were together, right? Feeding the 5,000, healing the sick, raising the dead. They survived his crucifixion and witnessed his resurrection. Still, they struggled to see Jesus for who he truly was. 
And now Jesus was saying goodbye to them. He had to go home. Ascension Sunday has at least three important lessons for us this morning. One, it affirms Jesus' true identity. Two, it tells us what we're to do in response to who Jesus is. And three, it tells us where the power comes from living as Christ would have us live. So let's start with Jesus' identity. If you've ever recited the Apostles' Creed, you know it summarizes who Jesus is. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Let me breathe for a second. <laughs> Our denomination, in case you don't know this, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ is not known for reciting creeds. But the majority of us would probably agree with what this creed has to say about who Jesus is. Jesus is our Savior, our Lord. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All of this was confirmed at and through his ascension. In his last moments with his disciples, just before he ascended, Jesus gave them their marching orders. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer, to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. You are witness to these things. The second point. His last instruction to his followers were that they were to be witnesses to all they had seen. Donald Gray Barnhouse tells a story about something that happened in the 1936 Olympics. In the women's 400 meter relay race, the Germans had a very comfortable lead when the third runner passed the baton to the fourth and last runner. And with the clear five yard lead, the race was as good as one, but the last runner dropped the baton and cost them the race. She was devastated. Shortly after the game, Barnhouse was looking at a magazine with pictures of the Olympics and under the pictures were captions there was actually, you know, there was a picture that he knew he would find of, of the runner dropping her baton in a relay with captions in three languages. The English caption said, they muffed the baton. The French said, they dropped Le Temoin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. T-E-M-O-I-N. As a Texan, I would say, they dropped the Temuin, 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 I don't know how to say it. Anyway, the Temuin. As an ordinary French word, Temuin means witness. The idea was that the runner who reached the tape first, right, and you know, broke the tape, had to have the baton in his or her hand as a witness that the full distance had been covered by each of the runners. The jury is still out about whether this generation will drop the baton when it comes to being a witness for Christ. We see on the day of ascension who Jesus really is, and we see what needs to happen in response. We're called to be his witnesses to invite our friends to follow him, to live a life that attracts others to Christ. Will we pass the baton to the next generation of Christians? There's one more lesson. One more lesson that reveals where the power comes from to live as followers of Christ.
Jesus says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Where does our power come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift that God has promised us. Next week, when we celebrate Pentecost, we'll talk more about the gifts of the Spirit. Among them is the power to endure. That's something we need right now, right, in a big way. The Holy Spirit also gives us guidance. It doesn't make much difference how much power you have if you're going in the wrong direction. I heard a story about a virus, sorry, not the virus we've been thinking about for a year and a half, but a virus that infected a flock of Canadian geese. And this virus destroyed their navigation system, causing these geese to fly around in circles. And as they did so, they became disoriented and they got lost. And it was devastating for the flock. Thousands of geese died, all because they had lost their ability to find their way. Many people today are as clueless about the direction their lives need to take as those geese. I'm convinced that the reason Christians aren't having the impact God has called us to have in this world is that we fail to seek the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit. In light of Christ's ascension, we know who Jesus is. He's like the prince that comes to woo the love of his life without revealing his identity. We are his beloved. We're being called out to pass the baton to the next generation to tell the story of his love, his love for us, his love for all people, his love for our world. And he's promised us his spirit to empower us and guide us as we find our way to our true home. For the past two weeks now, We've talked about the call to abide. That's a big term in the Gospel of John, actually. To, to abide means to remain with, or actually, as we mentioned the last, over the last two weeks, to find your true and ultimate home. In this case, to find your true and ultimate home in Christ. Sometimes it doesn't feel like Christ is with us in this world as we know it, but his true and ultimate home is heaven. We are, all of us, longing to go to that place where Christ has already gone. Until then, we have work to do, and we can draw strength from the certain that we, too, are homeward bound.
So now this is the time in our service where we have our offertory message. And earlier this week when I was thinking about what I would say during this message, my first thought was to go Google an inspirational quote or a poem. And then I remembered that I recently got this book. And so I could do it the old fashioned way. Instead of Googling, I'm gonna look in this book. This was my grandmother's book, it's Leaves of Gold. And I was not aware of that book growing up, I don't remember it, but I think it was popular in my grandmother's generation and my mom's generation. Uh, my grandmother got this, I think, as a wedding shower gift. Um, so, and some of you may know, my grandmother passed away somewhat recently, and as we were going through her things, my mom came across this book and asked my brother and I if we were interested in keeping it. And we both said no, there were so many things to go through. And my mom looked at me and she said, you need this book. <laughs> and it's just kind of ironic that a few weeks later, I'm actually using it. It was like the perfect thing for today. So I was just gonna read one quote from here as our inspiration for our operatory. So one thing and only one in this world has eternity stamped upon it. Feelings pass, resolves and thoughts pass, uh, opinions change. What you have done lasts, lasts in you, through ages, through eternity, what you have done for Christ, that and only that you are. That was by F. W. Robertson. So as we come to this time of offering, may we each think of what we will do either by giving of our money, our talents, or our time, what will we do? What actions will we do for Christ that will last in us through the ages? Let us pray. Holy God, as we offer our gifts this morning, we're thankful for those that have gone before us and the wisdom that they have passed down to us. We're thankful for the reminder that we're called to be witnesses for Christ. And as we give our material gifts, our gifts of service, let that be a lasting witness to the world of what this church family, this church home is all about, what we're all about as individual Christians. We pray always in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples, and he took bread and he broke the bread, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, saying, this is the new cup, my blood, spilled for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until his return. Let us pray. And I'll read one more uh, inspiration to lead us into prayer from the Leaves of Gold. This is called Quietness by Doran. Be still and know that I am God, that I who made and gave thee life will lead thy faltering steps aright. That I who see each sparrow's fall will hear and heed thy earnest call. I am God. Be still and know that I am God. When aching burdens crush thy heart, then know I form thee for thy part. In purpose in the plan I hold, trust in God. Be still and know that I am God. Who made the atom's tiny span and set it moving to my plan, that I who guide the stars above will guide and keep thee in my love. Be thou still. Dear God, as we come to this time, we ask you to still our hearts, still our minds, and help us be ever thankful and ever present of the gift you gave us of your Son, Jesus Christ. May you bless this bread and this cup as we partake this morning. Help it to renew us and refresh us as we go throughout our week. Amen. And it's our privilege to serve at God's table this morning and to remind you all are welcome at God's table.
also thank you for those who break the rain to come here in person today. Thank you to those who have attended virtually today. And we always appreciate it when you spend the first part of your Sunday with us, with our church family. And now may God, you know, also before I say the benediction, let's, we're standing now. We stand and we, we sing the song together. If you choose to uh, hold the hand of a family member, that's, a, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun to stand up and sing together. So now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace and share the love of the living Christ with all compassion with